welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today, this time on the road for the first time ever. I'm Steve Vonderhaar with Intelligent Research. Join me on this is very special edition of Intelligent Video Today, Nicholas Hagen from Hive Streaming. Welcome, Nicholas. Thank you so much. It's great to have you uh, and great to be able to get together with you in person instead of the virtual studio. Uh, for, you visited uh, the virtual studio before. so I people did. people Great to be back. <laughs> in the real studio. IRL, yeah. Yes. Uh, but uh, so people who have watched the episode uh, should know about Hive Streaming. But, but uh, let's uh, reposition Hive Streaming uh, where you're at today. Everyone knows you as a provider of enterprise content distribution networks. But uh, uh, tell us a little bit about the Legacy Hive and uh, where where you're at uh, today. Sure. Uh, yeah, as you know, Steve, we started off as a research company trying to find ways to deliver video in a super efficient way. Uh, when I mean, Hive started um, uh, around the time where uh, Google uh, purchased YouTube. And uh, of course, as always, the consumer market affects the, the, the uh, business and the enterprise market. Absolutely. And uh, we knew, and we took a bit, big bet on the fact that we thought that enterprises will want to communicate with their employees over video, mm -hmm. and that's not going to work, basically. Yeah. So we built these algorithms, and we came up with uh, a, a fantastic set of algorithms and a lot of patents around video distribution. But already five, six years ago, we started thinking about the next step. Mm -hmm. We really have a unique position in the type of data that we have access to. And, and we started thinking about what we can do with that data to push the boundaries to the next level. So yes, we have like three uh, product lines. One is uh, the infrastructure product line right. in which the ECDN is... The, the is traditional, the making yeah. sure it, the video works. Yeah, and also that the network doesn't crash. Yeah, yeah. that's a nice side benefit. Yeah. <laughs> so but we'll, we were directing ourselves as much towards the, to infra, infrastructure people as to video people by then. After that, we have the video experience layer or dimension where we, it's really about pushing up the quality and I know we're going to talk more about yeah. that later. Mm -hmm. And the third dimension is communications intelligence, because we're really sitting there uh, at the intersection of the user, the viewer, right. uh, the network, the video stream, the video platform. So we kind of see exactly what's happening and we want to provide actionable insights around that. Yeah. So your journey really reflects the uh, whole legacy uh, route of the enterprise video uh, world in general. Uh, in days past, we were just happy if we got video from point A to point B and got it across the finish line and and just made it work. Yeah, you know that was and that was no small feat when I've uh, made that possible for enterprises to actually get video to the people who are supposed to be watching it. But now we're kind of moving towards that issue of quality. Yeah. Why why should we be thinking of quality as an important issue for enterprises to be considering now? I was going to say, don't get me started. I want you to get me started. So, uh, well, I, I, I am a firm believer that human minds are hardwired uh, uh, for real face-to-face -face interaction. Right. And the resolution with which I see you right now mm -hmm. makes me see all these subtle micro expressions and um, it makes me trust you. Right. And At it, least a little bit more. Well, I guess... <laughs> We right. sense something in this right. physical space right. around the person we're interacting with or a person that's communicating something. Right. And if we don't see that, even if it's a great message and it's truthful and it's honest, if you don't get the details, an audio is almost mm -hmm. as, or, or even more important because yeah. you need to hear the subtle tones mm -hmm. of, of what the person is saying. And if you get stuck on a 720p, mm -hmm. I mean, that was a feat some years ago yeah. in corporate networks. Yeah. You cannot stop there, man. Right. You, you, you need to get higher. Yeah. I, my vision is 4K for everyone and being able mm -hmm. to see all those micro expressions and, and, and because that's the way you get people to really feel the message. Yeah, the the worst you'll accept is the best you've ever seen, right? Yes. It's, it's, uh, you you or are always hungrier for that type of engagement that can only come with a, a video video style interaction that uh, you get to hear somebody, you get to see somebody as well. Exactly, and and I mean we're influenced by the consumer market, and people have 4K TV sets back home. They're watching their favorite TV series in that resolution. Right. And then when they see their CEO talking about next year's strategy with a like hazy mm -hmm. image, 
that gets stuck. It's it's not it's not good. It's almost worse than not doing the video at all yeah now you got some people out there say come on nicholas it's 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 enterprise it's mm -hmm. it's it's the business realm i don't need 4k uh in in my business realm why should i be thinking about quality video issues for standard business applications well i think it's going to be a um, a competitive advantage how so because in in this age, where everything is spinning faster and faster, and we're going to talk about AI later, mm -hmm. um, you really need your, uh, your employees to be fully aligned with your direction and your message and where you're going. Uh, and I think the companies that, that, that are able to produce that exceptional quality, they will have employees that are more engaged, more aligned, more, less confused. Right. So I think it's going to turn out to be a competitive advantage. So not just like it should look cool. Right. That's good. But, you know, it's business outcomes. I, I, I'm sure it's going to be possible to see it in the results. And so we used to talk in terms of the ego cast uh, for CEOs wanting to see themselves on screen. But it's something more than that now. It really yeah. drives the business outcomes. Now, when we move beyond quality, we you mentioned it earlier, the idea of communications intelligence. And I, I really hadn't heard that term before. What do you what do you mean by that? Well, I think we need to get away from vanity metrics. Mm -hmm. Like uh, if a CEO is speaking to their whole workforce yeah. and they prepared for this for weeks, it's super important that everyone gets it, wh where we're going next year, mm -hmm. things like that. And right. then there are people around him or her saying like, hey, great job. You yeah. did great. Right. But mm -hmm. you, you walk away from there with a feeling like, was it really great? Yeah. So I think communications intelligence is about putting the guesswork out of that mm -hmm. and the vanity metrics like, oh, there were a lot of hearts when you spoke yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. what's the statistical the significance? Yeah. So we we we're, we're, By the we're, way, you can clap on this current thing if you'd like, but we're not going to watch any of that no, stuff because no. we're, we're in, interested in intelligence. And what yeah. does that intelligence, so where does that come from? So the intelligence is about trying to get real signals Mm -hmm. showing whether the message landed. Right. And I think um, I have this model that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for people need to be aware of the message. Mm -hmm. They need to pay attention. Yeah. They need to uh, understand the message. Without understanding it, I mean, it doesn't matter. And then they become engaged. But if they didn't understand it, what, did, did that engagement actually lead to any outcomes and eventually ultimately they need to agree with the message not mm -hmm. because they have to because it makes ten sense to them this message yeah. so it's extremely complex yeah. to 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 create that type of alignment and we are on this difficult mission to find those signals mm -hmm. and to present it in a way that provides intelligence to the people communicating the message so that they can adapt and change for the next time when something did not work. Yeah, it sounds like you're trying to take the intangible and make it tangible in a yes. way. That uh, So how do you go about measuring uh, this type of intelligence? Well, uh, we are launching a new product called High Focus. Mm -hmm. um, and that What does one, that do? That one is capturing attentiveness okay. in terms of how the... Uh, the, 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 the sound, if it's on, if it's high, if, if, if the window is in focus or minimized, mm -hmm. if the, the, the audience was participating for right. the full event or just mm -hmm. a small part. Right. And that's just the start of our journey right. towards okay. providing real communications intelligence. But we show that on a map. We, we overlay it on mm -hmm. geography, on functional part of the, mm -hmm. the, the, the organization and things like that. That's a starting point to try and capture statistical information on whether the the message landed. Yeah, now that's a little bit more elaborate than uh, just saying 120 people watched. Yeah, uh, exactly. So Which is basically the extent of, of uh, video analytics today. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's a big thing. So uh, um, uh, now you collect this information. How, how can it help workers when you, when you do collect this type of information? Uh, you mean how well, in the in the intelligence in the intelligence realm you're you're going out you're tracking exactly you know if people are paying attention if they're moving their mouse uh, uh, for for the viewers out there uh, yeah. who who are watching the uh, uh, are there benefits uh, for, for them for, too for, for them yeah absolutely and first of all I just want to say this is not a spy 
program. Okay. Because if okay. there uh, are lower than a certain number of viewers in a location that mm -hmm. doesn't pay attention, right. we don't we don't show that. Okay. It has to be a a critical mass of viewers for right. us to show the the attentiveness score for that uh, city or office or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So we we don't. This is for the benefit of the viewers because they want to pay attention. They want to understand what's being yeah. said so it's more of a message to the people organizing these events that that create the message that you need to get better uh, for the sake of your viewers because i mean your employees are yeah. there to do something for you and if you don't do it so that they pay attention then you have yeah. a problem on your hands yeah so in the end it will benefit the the end viewers because they will they will get better uh, events. Yeah, and uh, that's what everyone's going for. When you're trying to communicate a message, you want to make sure that the audience is actually absorbing it, mm -hmm. and uh, the audience wants to get something out of it at the same time. Yeah. And uh, this kind of is a full circle kind of a uh, full circle kind of approach to it. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and that improved communications can help a company in the, in the age of AI. At least uh, that's the case you were making to me. What 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 do you mean by that? Well. I think that very soon, I mean, we're not there yet. Uh, LLMs are hallucinating and, and they are not good at everything. But in a few years time, every single employee will have access to, I mean, individual contributors. Right. They have never been managers. Right. Suddenly they will manage 10 AI agents that perform mm -hmm. work on their behalf 24 seven at a very low cost everyone's going to have a direct report, yeah. either either human or AI enabled. Yes. And that means that that person, the human on top of that pyramid, mm -hmm. will, will suddenly, if they are clear on strategy and deeply aligned with, with where, where the company is going, their productivity will get multiplied by mm -hmm. those agents. Right. But if the person is confused or working from outdated goals... Mm -hmm. That confusion will scale just as fast, if not faster. Right. So I think this means that deep alignment, companies need to invest in that as seriously as they invest in product development and sales. Mm -hmm. And the most powerful way to achieve deep alignment is through live video yeah. that is executed in, in a fantastically great way. Yeah. You know? Uh, so therefore, you, you, you come all the way from these AI agents doing work, like massive productivity, but mm -hmm. could go in a confusing direction. Right. N need for alignment. So everyone who's now a manager mm -hmm. will know and agree with where the company is going. And then live video is the best way to achieve that. Yeah, if you have uh, everyone kind of rowing the boat in the same direction, uh, it's going to have a multiplier effect mm -hmm. in terms of uh, what the uh, AI output you're yeah. going to be uh, refl getting reflected from the, the databases that each individual employee is creating. It's the uh, ultimate uh, garbage in, garbage out uh, yep. scenario on but steroids. On steroids, isn't it? yeah. So I say, like, this is what I call the multiplier effect. Yeah. Clarity scales, but mm -hmm. so does confusion. So. Yeah. Uh, it's like if you get 100 points, if you clear a strategy with, with 10 AI agents, right. you get minus 100 points if you're confused with instead right. of zero. So mm -hmm. it, the, the, the diff will be 200 points now. Right. So if you communicate well and you're one to many communications from, from the very leadership from the top, uh, that's going to have an impact on how well people work and in turn how well the AI works. Yes. And also I think it's important that Yes, it usually starts from the top, the CEO who wants to communicate something high level. But I think that live video needs to, to spread like a chain reaction in the organization. And, and usually the CEO has a big role to play there as a role model. Like being, having an authentic voice trying to explain where the company is going. So you achieve mm -hmm. that alignment. But it's still not clear enough for everyone to know exactly what they're doing. So yeah. that message has to be reinforced by different subject matter experts and other type of leadership yeah. uh, and that will th not an explosion in slop video <laughs> right but, but a lot of video really clarifying where we're going so that multiplier effect can can go to the plus 100 instead yeah. of the minus 100 yeah now we are in the i think we are in the nascent earliest days of ai video 
particularly as it relates to its use in the enterprise. So yeah. we're going to be looking back at this time as really the formative formative days of what's going to be really a transformative time for the overall uh, workplace uh, in terms of how video can have a true impact on building corporate knowledge over time. So with that in mind, with it being early days, I'm going to ask you to look in the crystal ball three years down the road. You're doing these things uh, with competitive intelligence, with in, in measuring the quality and, and doing all things that uh, uh, you're working on right now. But Take us over the horizon. Take us past the, the focus product. Uh, yeah. uh, what's What are we going to be looking at, uh, say, three years down the line in terms of uh, AI innovation that's going to transform how we begin, uh, transform how we think about video's role in the enterprise? I think there are several categories where AI will make an impact. Uh, on the production part, it's, it, there's a lot that's going on. That's not our focus. Uh, but if we look at our realm and our, our mission of maximizing the impact of internal communication to create alignment, um, I think that we will be able to measure in real time how it's going, being able to, like much like the ECDN and our control the event product is like if, if, if the live event is going awry and, and, and the train is getting off the track, we are able to lift it back up again. Mm -hmm. We aim to be able to do that for the actual message of the event as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because each of those moments, someone told me uh, these are the moments that matter. They yeah. cannot fail. The train cannot go off track, yeah. right? Right. So we think that we can use AI to, to analyze what's going on, both, both mm -hmm. the perception from the viewers right. uh, and from the speakers and from what everyone is doing. And uh, So if I, I'm looking in the crystal ball, I think companies who will succeed and be uh, competitive, they will be able to mitigate not only video technology, right. but communication impact in real time with the use of AI. Yeah, so uh, remind us where people can find Hive Streaming on the web. So if they're intrigued by what you said today, then come, yeah. come visit uh, you there. The, www.hivestreaming.com. Mm -hmm. Com. All right. Well, we'll have that right on the uh, on the scroll right beneath us uh, when we go to editing, and uh, that'll be that'll be great. Uh, Nicholas Hagen, thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today, and we thank you for taking the time to watch today's episode. If you'd like more insight from industry thought leaders like Nicholas Hagen from Hive Streaming, just go to our YouTube link uh, right below there to click to get notifications of future episodes of our interview series. For Intelvid Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Onerhar. Thanks for your time.